from Wakefield. It's the Nolan Car Night Show, inviting you to join Nolan and his guests this week, Ralph Stevens and Stephen Kalenish the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Nolan. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the show. And how lucky am I, not just with the nice weather, but to not only have a returning guest, but to speak with two people who released last month an amazing, amazing album. It's my distinct pleasure to have Mr. Ralph Stevens and Stephen Kalunish back onto the show. Gentlemen, thank you for doing this. How are you? No, thank you for having us. We, I am fantastic. Stevie, you can answer that. I'm fantastic too, <laughs> but I go, I could think of another word. I'm I'm grateful. I know grateful. that. Grateful. Well, yeah. well, Matt, I've, now got should... the, I've got the light coming in. Yes, so that's exactly. I hope this yeah. doesn't bother anyone. Well, You're blinded by the light. Yes, blinded by the light. Yes. Um, now, you know, although this is Ralph's first time, Stevie, we 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 it's been about nine months since you were last done. We just said before we got going here that it was two important people in your life and everyone else's life's birthday the last two days, being Paul McCartney and Brian Wilson's, and seeing as this past year they celebrated their 60th anniversary of existence. For you to be part of that world and to have worked with those people and 60 years later for them to still be at it, what's it been like for you? I've had an incredible journey, and Ralph is certainly one of my great partners, but I heard from, I talked to Brian Wilson this morning or yesterday morning. My mind is not clear. I think it maybe it was yesterday morning. And he's sounded in good spirits and he asked me a lot of questions and he, we didn't talk about music. We just talked about life and kids well, and things like that. Well, that's what we makes go way back. Fun. We've been friends over 50 years. And I wrote Paul a letter and a note too. Uh, I didn't talk to him. But he's been very helpful, too, with a lot of things. He's a wonderful guy. Well, that's what makes life good. If, you, if you're able to talk about stuff that's not professional, it always makes a good friendship better. Um, I, I want to ask you first, Ralph, and I, I know reading your bio online, you talked about, you know, inspiration from the four, um, the four freshmen and the Beach Boys and groups of that nature growing up in Southern California. So for you, growing up... Ne- in Southern California, all these years later, did you ever imagine to work with someone like Stevie who worked with these guys who you were inspired by? It's a, it's a great story, you know. <laughs> um, these things, you know, just walk into your life and then they leave. But Stevie and I have been together for a long, a long time. And, you know, um, and to, to actually work with someone that that has worked with Paul McCartney and Brian, it's it's uh i'm just walking on on air here you know it's not it's not real it's not real well i'll tell you one thing i'll humanize it ralph will remember this after we met after i wrote little bird i went bankrupt i'm sorry ralph i just want to tell you this humanness yeah yeah and ralph came into this little station and i was pumping gas for a dollar 75 an hour after i wrote little bird I haven't told this one, not, not this way. And then we, it, a friend of his, R.J. Myers, Randy, who was, who was Jackie DeShannon's brother, anyway, and, and he told me about Ralph, and I met Ralph. I, and if I'm wrong, Ralph, you can correct me. So I used to start going to Ralph's, and I would stay overnight or something, and we'd write songs the night before and the day, and that that's how it started it's so many years ago. And then it'd be later or before that he became friends with my wife and all kinds of things but he can fill in but i think that's an interesting backstory this has not been all like straight ahead sure yeah we've actually lived lived life i mean that's yeah. that's what it is you know uh, you know the um the ups and 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 the downs the opportunities that come uh the sad the sad things that happen in 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 your life and to share you know some something like that with someone for as long as we have it's um i call it a gift sure you know but i want to sort of talk about that beginning times that you both got into each other got together with each other and I, i'm curious you know for you ralph going to usc getting your master's in music composition and stevie you you know, writing this poetry, writing with all sorts of people back in the early 70s. Do you think having these two different backgrounds musically that you've had has had a big impact on why you've been able to work together both so successfully and um, professionally? I would say that's very true. I mean, you know, I have so many, you know, I've, I've been on this planet a long time and I've had a, a lot of d- 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 
different influences. And, uh, you know, Stevie has his own set. And uh, um, it gives us um, kind of an ability to go into many different uh, places. You know, we have this, um, um, the album, which is a lot about uh, poetry with the music. Uh, but I have a band, Sacred Cowboys, that is a country band. Uh, I've scored films. And um, I, I think, you know, to have, to, have, um, to have someone that has different influences in you is a really great thing. And if you can, you know, pick up the pieces of sure. it, it's a fantastic thing, yeah. Well, how about you, Stevie? How's it been to work with somebody who's so different, musically it's, speaking? It's fantastic because Ralph's seen me when I used to pick up the check for everyone, and then he's seen me go broke, and he's seen me, you know, when I'm supposed to do something, not do it. And we've stayed together through thick and thin, and we have a really strong friendship, and his wife is an incredible friend of mine. So I'd say at the core of our relationship, Ralph, we've become friends and we've through good times through sad times we we've had a lot of them and i think this made a strong unit but we also we both were in love different times but when we started but we also love to have fun sure. and have joy when we work and we got a charge out of doing it not just um am i right ralph yeah, you know, I mean, I can I just uh, extend this a little further. As soon as I hear one, two, three, four, I'm ready to play. So that's how I feel. I just love my life. And, you know, I, I love that I that I can do this. And um, um, my wife has a real estate company. And because of her success, I was actually part of it a long time ago. And she said, you go retire, you go write music. So that's what I did. And to have someone give me another another gift, you know, to to be able to do it like that, it's a it's a it's a fantastic thing. Now, Ralph, you, you talked about how you scoring mu scoring music for films and so the other work you've done in commercial work a, a, as well. Do you remember that first moment? And I know Stevie with you, you I remember the story you shared about being uh, listening to Little Bird over the phone. I believe by Al Jardine in the studio. But for, for you, Ralph, when you heard the first thing you worked on, whether it be a commercial jingle or through a composition for a film, do you remember that first feeling you had when you heard that public? Yeah, I do. I remember uh, um, we had a um, Sacred Cowboys did an album that wasn't really released. We had about 15 or 16 songs on it. Last or see, two or three, four years ago, three years ago, I, uh, I, I redid the album and uh, uh, remixed it and actually, you know, br brought all this different stuff in. Um, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Um, I'm sorry. Can you ask me the question? Oh, yeah, I, I was going to ask you, you know, you've all, you both, I'm sure, have had experiences of working on something and then you finally hear it on the radio. Oh, yes. where it is. So for you, what was that first moment? It was a Sacred Cowboy it, song. Yeah. There was a Sacred Cowboy sound that came on the radio when I was in the car. And it was so, I mean, you know, I'd never had that happen before. And it was just so exciting and uh, and and inspiring and make, make uh, makes me want to do more. Sure. You know, that's how I felt. Uh, that's how I felt about it. Now, this album, I want to say, which is a, a great, um, a great, really well done album. You both worked in the past on material together. What led to you both wanting to put out an album of, of not just this material, but just in general? Stevie, do you want to ask? I can. Yeah, I I wanted to put something together with Ralph, and we picked the best ones that we thought for the first album. But I was excited to work with him, and I thought I'd like to bring Ralph more into the forefront, but he's done great on his own. And I just thought we'd be a good partnership and our life story is interesting. We've both been through a lot of things and we bring it to the music. But Ralph can score, he knows music, he can write string arrangements. He's a good lyricist too. Uh, he's a he's a great melody writer. And his melodies, when I first met him, I would hear, you know, he even worked on one that he doesn't even remember working on with 
with a, our buddy RJ and it was called Lift Them Up. And he, he, he bow, bowed out gracefully for some reason, but he's always had great sense of melody. And I just felt it might be a great partner. Sure. And you, Ralph? I would say, yeah, just to, just to, just to add to what Stevie is saying, you know, um, when he when we first started uh, to think about writing songs to together, he would send me these the his uh, poems, and the poems would be ten pages long, and I had to look at the, at the poem and try to um, because I'm not really scoring the poem. What I do is I kind of take ten pages, you know, a million words and try to find a song in there you know it's generally the idea of what the poem is but to to you know i can't use a, th a thousand words or sure. a, a million words so i have to have to cut it down so i just kind of pick and choose and that's kind of how i developed sure. my my way to work with uh stevie yeah, yeah. and with, with the beach boys with dennis i they would they would almost take the words verbatim, but I wrote them more as lyrics. With Ralph, I've more sent poems. It's a different process. But little bird, be still. All the ones you know, a friend like you, were written as songs, sure. not as poems, even though they could read as poems. But with Ralph, a lot of them were longer, and he distilled the best and asked me if it was cool. And I realized that, and when I worked with the Pixies too, Frank Black, that you they couldn't use everything, so they. And P.F. Sloan later was the same like Ralph, except for a few songs. He would say, let's cut this down. He said, he over-exaggerated in Life Magazine, interviewed him. He said, Stevie gives me 250 pages and I make it three, but it wasn't quite that bad. <laughs> now, I'm, well, I'm lucky I just said 10 because, you know, <laughs> 250. Yeah. Now I'm curious, you know, with, with this album, with a lot of the songs out of the eight, there are a lot of songs that have different beats to them. I, I know Last Shot it sounds like, to me, and I'm not I'm not musically gifted at all, besides a quick few seconds in fifth grade playing the saxophone, but a song like I, I, Last Shot, more of a funk beat that I hear in the song compared to maybe others on the album that have more of a folksy or a jazz element. When you both are coming together, playing this material together for an album, was the type of beat that these songs have already there, or was that after you know the lyrics and putting the songs together? I can answer that. So the um, that song uh, we started, I don't even know 19, 1987 or something, a long, long time ago, and um, we did a demo of it. Um, and I always thought it was a great idea and, and something that the world, you know, should hear, you know, that, that yeah, we yeah. have to, you know, take care of the planet, you know, because no planet, no, sure. no life, right? So um, I, so I had, you know, this goes back so long so that the systems, the, re the re recording systems that I recorded on back then, don't even don't apply to now. Sure. So I had this this demo, although I think it was pretty good. Um, I could never I could I, I would have to start over again. So sure. I sure. talked to Stevie about it and I said, you know what, let's take this song and just redo it. And uh, and really that there's there's lots of contributions from uh, from uh, players who came in and, you know, uh, Bill Angarola came up with this with this bass part and and um, you know all the, all those kind of things that contributed to sure, what I sure. think is a really powerful track you know yeah. so the beat oh. the beat was there kind of but you know then then it we just blew it up sure and and the concept which we set and even then because I was uh, intentionally doing it is it's the last shot the last chance for civilization perhaps for peace, for understanding. And if we don't get the whole act together, which we're still grow, going through now with all the turmoil in the world, this is your last shot. This is your last chance. This is your last possibility. We've got it to pull it together individually as a planet and as a world. And Ralph and I, even in the 60s, well, 70s, he's a little younger than me. He can tell you if he wants. And uh, and so to a plea to the planet. Sure. Like it's like give give peace a chance, but we put it before that. Even uh, it's our last 
our last chance maybe to sure. pull this thing together. Yeah, to have air, you know, to breathe, to, yeah. to have food, you know. I mean, you know, the world is smaller now because of communication. It yeah. is, but it's also more dangerous yeah. because it's smaller too, you know. And I mean, one small thing, I don't want to say <laughs> we're going to be gone, but we could be, you know. Sure. Besides and, that. And it's, it's even more urgent than when we wrote it, I think, Ralph. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes. For world peace and things like that, people have to be together. World peace starts within an individual. It doesn't, you don't all of a sudden, world peace, like people talk, e individuals have to be committed to peace within themselves and then to translate in their actions. But you also have to have some kind of guard around you to protect the peace, which I don't think I was as aware of in the 60s. Now, Ralph served in Vietnam. You might have a different view than, than I do on that. Well, I had a great job in Vietnam. <laughs> I was in in the uh, in the the army, and I was uh, special services, and I produced bands. There you go. I, I went to Vietnam, and uh, I um, uh, I had heard about this command military touring show program, and I went and and auditioned for it. They needed a piano player right then. I went on the road in Vietnam. We we would do two shows a day. Just like a, apocalypse now, you know where they land on sure. the fire base, the whole deal, and uh, uh, and and then we we would have one day off, uh, and then we'd go back out again and you know fly to wherever, sure. and uh, uh, so I I was so lucky, you know, I mean uh, to be able to play music, to produce music, to to learn. I mean, I was like nineteen or you know eighteen, nice. you know, and. Uh, yeah, well, that, you're, you're not just learning about music, but you're learning about life and yourself as well so, in that scenario. Now, Steve, for you, I mean, besides that song, Last Shot, which I really love, another song, Binghamton, I love, which, of course, is your ode to your hometown in, in New York. You know, from California to from New York to California, you, you, you're still infatuated in love with your, your hometown you grew up. All these years later, writing about back home, does it get more rich in, in depth with the song or is it just still the same? I got enriched. And what, Ralph, I did a song about my house even, which I which I brought. But this, Ralph said, why don't you bring a bigger concept? So the house's song is called 111 Crestmont Road. It's on another album. So I told Ralph about Binghamton. And then he said, like, put some personal things in. So... He fished and dug it out of me, like when I did Tadpole and all those things. So we got a lot of extra stuff that I just didn't get in the general piece. And by me tuning into that, I could capture the veterans and how the town and how much I love Binghamton, the beautiful roads where the Indians used to have trails. And I used to think it was bullets of the past. And we thought we found skeletons in the creek but it might have been chicken bones sure. i mean you know when you're young you have that imagination and we find a little bullet on the trail we say this is from the indians or the cow well you know like probably we made it up and yeah. that was to get the feeling of the countryside binghamton is where the susquehanna and shenango rivers meet it's a gorgeous place in upstate new york i even went to the college for a while called suny it was called harper then state university of new york and ralph encouraged me to dig it and we we fleshed it out and it, it's all the stuff is true in there. And I love that town and celebrate Binghamton, New York. I actually, the weird thing is I was born in Endicott because they didn't have room in the Binghamton hospital, but I was living in Binghamton. And my dad was a golf pro, Steve K. He later had the Brookline Country Club where they had a US Open and a Riders Cup. So I had all that rich land, but it's so gorgeous there. And you have where all the leaves turned fantastic colors that time of year. And it was a good place to grow up. But my mother used to take us for walks, my brother and I, when we were very young. And it, it was a quite a lovely, visual, stunning. It's always like being in apocalypse now, but in a positive way sure. of seeing the colors, the seasons, the leaves. And that was Binghamton. And Ralph really pushed me to go for this one. And we did it. And you can ask Ralph, because uh, he had a lot of strong input with me so okay then Ralph how'd that go yeah I was just going to say that you know for 
sorry uh, that uh, Stevie the the stories that he told me about where he where he grew up and you can you can see how this person who is now Stevie with all these beautiful influences you know in the in uh, the lakes the rivers you know. Uh, the Indian trails, all this beautiful imagery, yeah. just just knocked me out. I mean, I just want I just want to write a song about it, you know. And and then you know we like I like Stevie said, it it didn't just happen in one day. We 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 worked on. It. He sent me photographs of of his little house and all this stuff, and it just you know um, I'm I was I'm I'm so proud to have been able to portray it in this song. Now, with the album came for the self-titled, the title track of the album, I want to say, there was a music video that came out, and Stevie was the lead and the main star of the album. I'm curious, from your perspective, maybe Ralph put it together, but also Stevie, what was that like to be to create a music video for a, a song of yours? As Ralph will tell you, I love being, I'm being honest, Ralph. I love being the center of attention. I like <laughs> being a performer, and I like being what I call, I remember once, uh, the lead singer from Journey. What was his name? Steve Jerry? Perry? Steve Perry, yeah. We were up at Capitol and I was reciting to him and he said, you should go a little slower. He goes, I'm a lead singer, you know. <laughs> I go, I'm a lead poet. And he, he didn't have any comeback. It was so funny, but I wanted to do that. And Ralph got this great Peter Spire. Isn't he a great producer, director, Ralph? I think. Yeah. And he helped put it together shot by shot. And they coached me and they worked on me but I think the persona we created for the preacher is I think I could do a movie with that character I yeah. mean I'm it's so great and they brought out me but in a more what would you say Ralph a more enhanced way and a lot of takes and a lot of things but it was so much fun and then Peter said bring a lot of costume changes luckily they had a little wardrobe for me but mostly it was my Ralph McGovern made me go through my, because I have a lot of clothes, made me go through my closet. That was one of the hardest parts of the album. <laughs> I'm joking. But, um, and, and we meticulously went over everything. And it was like that kind of almost like they're, they're in, this guy has the church by, sure. you know, the soul by the grabbing them and, and to create that. I want to say what words, you know, but we tried to get at a level of truth in it. Sure. And the music. Ralph came up with that part where he sang at the piano. You saw him in it. I want to say, it, and the the and the the three the three choir people, uh, we re enhanced that. I want to say, and it, it got to be where I think that that is a very powerful video, and I yeah. commend everyone involved, Peter and all the people, all the crew, and all the everyone. Well, how about you, Ralph? What was that like? Well, uh, Pete and I, um, I scored a movie called Disarm Hate that he distributed with his uh, his company, uh, Rugged Entertainment. And uh, so I had already worked with him. He is also uh, one of the two guitar players in S Sacred Cowboys. So I have been working with him for m m many time, many years. And... Um, uh, I was I was thrilled, sure, you know, sure. to have a video of one of our songs. You know, uh, this was before Sacred Cowboys had done done anything, and uh, uh, just to have this this, he's an Academy Award nominated uh, director. So sure, sure. You know, to be in his hands and to take our project, our our song, and mm, uh, make it into something uh, that people enjoy. And, and maybe learn from too. Sure. It, it's uh, it's um, uh, it's really great. Yeah. Well, I'm curious because obviously, well, both very creative people in very different ways, music and Stevie, of course, your artwork and poetry and all that other stuff. When you're putting together this song and you're seeing the full view of it, and then now it's getting put into a video form, how careful are you in terms of directing how you want to come out, or are you just sort of letting the producers and the directors and those people? take care of it and see how it goes. If you ask me, go ahead, Stevie. I was just going to say for me. Yeah, you always, answer first. It's a piece. You know, you, you know, Pete's going to do it. I'm not 
concerned about it. It's it's going to be great. And uh, it's not what I do, you know. Sure. Well, and for me, I must say, and I, Ralph, too, I, I'm, I know I'm not always the easiest to work with, but they allow with their direction. I think we have to ask Al if I'm good or, or Ralph, but they allowed me to become myself in the character with just a few directive nudges or whatever you would call it. Now, Ralph, if you want to amplify on that, that's, and they allowed me because they know I'm not good at taking exact orders, especially Ralph knows. And I, I felt amazing. And I had to get, you have to get your ego out of the way, you know, cause you're a video man. I'm a preacher in a video, you know, so you have to get it out of the way and allow the work. And we knew when the cut was right, and Ralph knew. Ask Ralph about that. Well, well what I was just going to say is is that uh, Pete let you be who you are. I don't think there, I think we can put it all in one basket like like that. You know, you are very outgoing. You're a poet, a poet. You you express your feelings. You tell stories. Well, isn't that the character that's in the video? It's it's the yeah, same person. Or my, I would say, I'm closer to that character. Yeah, I mean, in real life, yeah. I think Ralph's right. They they didn't make a phony that I put on for that show. It's not that I'm always going around preaching to people because I, I've been known to do that on the street in the old days, <laughs> but not lately. Now I'm curious, uh, and I should have asked this at the beginning. So apologies for the the poor placement of this question, but. Uh, um, with any other project or, or CD or album or whatever you want to call it, record, there's always excess material that doesn't make the cut or rearranging the direction or, or setup of, of the album. So I'm curious, what songs came first in terms of putting this album together? Or was it sort of just a random occurrence of this song coming and that song coming? I let Ralph answer that one. I, I don't know if you uh, saw, I, I had written something about how uh, over the year, over this long period of time, uh, you know, many writing sessions that uh, uh, we we would simply record these ideas on a cassette player. Many people don't know what a cassette player is. <laughs> A little thing about that is, you know, tape inside. Um, anyway, and we just, I just put them in a box and, you know, five years passed, 12 years passed and on and on and on. And when we decided to, to do this, we just kind of went through all of these. I can't even say all, there are, there are thousands. I mean, there's so many cassette tapes, but we went through a bunch of them and we found these particular songs and we thought these all fit together well. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then we had the choice of because then the, 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 there was another part of the process, which is Stevie spe being spoken word. There were like four songs. There are three songs on uh, the album uh, uh, that Austin Rogers is a singer. And we got and uh, he, he came in and sang them for us. So we had singing and then we had speaking. And I remember, you know, Pete was uh, 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 the uh, director was thinking maybe these are two different albums, but I liked the flow of it, and I liked how even the last the the uh, the last track on the album, you know, is almost like a like an improvisation almost. I mean, it's, it's got horn. It's been produced now, so it's got a, a bunch of stuff in it that. Uh, but I'm saying that. The writing of it, Stevie sent me that poem and I just sat down and it just came out, you know, right. and and, uh, and, you know, you know, I don't know if, if you remember this, uh, that the, that cut, but uh, it, it, st it starts out at a certain tempo and then it picks up and there's like background singers and, you know, and then all of a sudden it really slows down and goes into a lot of little blues groove, yeah. you know. And uh, uh, that's how it came out. That, that, was, that was it, you know? So sometimes that's how things go. Yeah. And also I'd like to add, Ralph is very thorough. He follows through. He, he, he doesn't settle if he's not thinking is right. So we have an exchange where we both, with everything you've seen, both of us have agreed on. I mean, it, it wasn't always e instantly agreement, like instant karma. It was a it was a process, and the one thing I will say that I think Ralph brings out the best in me. But we also 
I think Ralph will agree. We have a lot of fun with these too. And we enjoy it. And we want to communicate to people what sure. some of these things, what the, the world really needs. Each one of our song has some basis, has a universal and an individual theme uh, is from my viewpoint. And I think Ralph will agree. And I think that we've tried to capture this and we just have one of those teams that were able to work together and sometime I would have personal issues and sometime he would, but we worked everything out in a smooth, and I would say not to diminish our role, but I would say that Kathy had a strong influence of making sure you and I stayed on the, My wife. <laughs> yeah, the on the, the trajectory. Sure. Well, that's, uh, I'm sure for, for most musicians or artists of that nature, you know, the most important thing is, is not the beginning, but the end goal and the end product and the music that you're putting out there. Cause that's what everyone is looking forward to. The last question I want to ask you before we end today. And again, thank you both gentlemen so much for doing this, you know, whether it be your individual works you've been a part of, or you've worked on or your collaborations that you've had together compared to those, what do you hope people take away from this album oh, from, compared to the other works? Stevie, you want to, you want to go first. first? Words? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Um, you know, I um, what I am left with is that I had this friend that I created something that we created something to to together, but uh, our our friendship, our friendship is you know. I don't want to say it's more important, but it is more important, you know, because, uh, you know, it's, it's what we, we, we trust each other. Yeah. We trust each other with ideas, you know, and, you know, when you put yourself up, um, you know, and say, Hey, how about this? And someone goes, well, that pretty much sucks. You know, it could go there, but you know, it doesn't necessarily have to go there and so we are open to each other we trust each other and and we want to share with the world this product that sure. we produced together it's a product of love of course yeah i would say that ralph summed a lot of it up but i tell you i would say i'm not the easiest person to work with i don't know what he'd say about himself but the fact is that he could see the good in me. Sometimes it was like you go in, you're scruffy, you're raw. I think he gave me maybe a little of polish, but he left enough of the rawness that we really believe in this album. And also for me and I and Ralph can respond, I think I want to touch people. I want to encourage people. I want people to try and find inner peace and calm. I want people to stand up against things that are wrong. One of our songs was used for women's rights issues. We've done a lot of, we have a public consciousness, both of us too, and we're trying to do something good in the world. We're not preachers, but even though that one video we were, but we're, we are wanting to communicate music at so many levels. And we try to combine a lot of those into a, a product that will touch people. And as, as we've both been saying lately, we're in this for the long haul. Sure. We're not, this is not like, hey, top 40 or could be. But from Little Bird could grow an album where I we have I want to say yeah. and have Ralph is a is a beautiful expansion and I hold Ralph in the same esteem I do Brian and Dennis McCart all of them I consider a partner that has made a difference in my life as a human as they have and also made an impact on me and maybe maybe a little bit of a better person and I want to share with other people that if you try within yourself, and Ralph, you can come in, if you try within yourself to do things that you only dream of, try to be somewhat realistic, but have dreams, but sure. don't, don't try, if you keep it real, for me, it's easier to progress, but if you have these high flying things, and then it, you'll always be let down. So try approach it in a kind of a realistic manner, but allow the creativity to flow through. Well, I think I just, I just want to add one. Yeah, one no, yeah go ahead. You have a second. Yeah. Uh, what I just want to say was, um, you know, obviously I stutter, and uh, uh, form, and, and I've always been a player, a producer. So I'm not the one in front, you know. Yeah. 
And uh, now because of this album, it's Stevie and me, you know? Yeah. And I have to be up front or I have to be in front. You know, I have to tell my story. Yeah. And, you know, it's a little bit frightening, you know, to expose yourself, right? That's how I kind of feel. But, you know, uh, I kind of, there was some... There was some film that I just watched, and the idea of the film or the uh, the moral was, you know, you just be yourself. Sure. That's all that matters, you know. So I'm gonna, Stevie was encouraging people. I'm going to tell people to don't be afraid of anything, you know, just go for it, you know. And uh, uh, enjoy the album. Sure. Yeah. Well, it, it's yeah. so great. I enjoy it so much. And at the end of the day, if, if the music can move you and, and create something for yourself, that's what's most important. Now, I know where I, where I can find it, but for those who don't know where to find it or don't know where it's located, where can they listen to it, view the video, all that information? The the video is available on online. You can uh, just probably uh, probably put I want to say video uh, and maybe CV's name. I think that'll that'll probably do it. Uh, uh, the album. It, it, you can find on all all the platforms: Spotify, Amazon, uh, YouTube Music, and so forth. Well, for all and, those out there, no, go ahead, Stevie. Uh, and part of I would like to say that Ralph brought up a beautiful point that out of whatever things that we might consider our flaws or our that we feel insecure about, like I might have certain things, Ralph might what he just talked about can come beautiful yeah out of the flock can come the beautiful because life sometimes from your, your mistake is your greatest asset look at helen keller uh, i want to part with one poem that i think uh, someday i'll get ralph to do in music a few people have but i like it's it's uh helen keller i wrote a poem and you know about helen keller yeah problems she touched me in stillness no sounds could she hear no stars could she see, yet she smiled as she walked, as if something within gave her eyes, gave her ears, gave her hope. And I, who could see the morning sunset, did not see in life as much as she could not hear the many silent voices. And this is what Ralph has done for me. He saw a good in me, another side in me, and I've tried to see it in him, and we've woven it into a Stevie, Ralph, Ralph Stevie, however you want to do it. Um, and I'm grateful, and I'm grateful for Peter, and I'm grateful for all the people that have helped us on this album. Ralph knows all the names. I don't ever hardly know my own name. <laughs> well, if you have a gift, don't let anything stop it, because if it's of quality, then people are going to enjoy it. Well, gentlemen, and I you were say... thankful to you for a young um, guy and a wonderful guy to be interested in us. Oh, well, I, I appreciate the kind words. Well, for all those out there enjoy it, because who the hell wouldn't down the line when both of these kind gentlemen get inducted in both the California Songwriters and Music Hall of Fame? You know, say, oh my gosh, so subscribe. So subscribe, comment, share, all that fun jazz, follow on social media. And the words of Johnny Carson, the dean of talk shows, certainly like this one, I bid you all a heartfelt good night. Till next time. <laughs>